I love printing. I love printing. I love it. I f***ing love printing. Hey, everybody. I want to welcome you back to another session with me, Warren Werbett, also known as The Print Whisper. Uh, do go check out www.theprintwhisper.com. We're going to have the site up slowly. And then uh, let me know what you think. If you could use some help, let me know. Give a call. I want to help you only if you want to be helped. Anyways, we're going to move on from that now. Uh, today, we got another session. And uh, wow, we got a great session today. We got Dave Carroll of Dope Marketing, Dope 360 Marketing, Dope Marketing. Oh, right dope. Dope marketing is the company. Dope 360 is the tool. Dope 360 is the cool. Gotcha. So Dave, just take 90 seconds and uh, give us a quick uh, roundabout of what it is you're doing. Yeah. So uh, my name is Dave Carroll, uh, CEO of a little company called Dope Marketing. We automate direct mail for the home service space. Uh, tons of other verticals, but our, our focus is home service. And that's because it's my background. I've owned a cleaning company here in the Twin Cities. It's our 12th year in business. We do a couple million dollars in revenue. I am 100% phased out of that. I don't know the names of our employees, the jobs that go, anything. I collect my check. If work is slow, they hit me. They say, Dave, run some campaigns and get some work on the calendar. Started that business about 12 years ago. Um, had a small little spurt in the software space. Uh, year three of my cleaning company, we came out with a software. I made a bunch of money right away. And then I, can we, we can swear, right? Hey, it's, you can say whatever you want. So, so I made some money and I it off right away. We made like three, 400 grand, got a bunch of users on there. And then I tried to turn the thing into a CRM that didn't work, but learned some lessons and went through some stuff and it exposed me to the world of data. So about eight years ago, I opened a data company brokering lists. So all of you mailers, printers, if you bought a list from somewhere, we're not Info USA. We're not Zoom. We're not where we are a boutique data shop, and that's where Dope Marketing came from. We were selling a bunch of data, running you know a couple hundred thousand pieces a month for my cleaning company. I said, "Hey, this mail thing is hard, kind of difficult from going from getting a list, cleaning the list, going through dealing with a print shop, dealing with the mail house, figuring out how to track this stuff." That four, five, six week process was a little bit cumbersome for. Dave, the window licker or power washer or whatever. And so I had a little aha moment and I was like, okay, this needs to be easier. And I looked at, was very familiar with the print space, but I looked at the average print shop owner, a 50 to 70 year old person who's been doing this for a couple of years. Uh, Going nowhere, not to, doing it right. Not yeah, their, their, their kids don't want to work for them. Maybe they suck at golf. The industry has changed, whatever happened. And what these people, maybe some of you watching this, didn't quite realize, to no fault of yours, but the world evolves, technology advances, printers are computers, and these things talk to each other. So what we did is we put a beautiful end to where a print shop or a user can come in, upload a list, pick a design, run hygiene, set up campaigns, draw a shape on a map, and send mail within that shape, have a postcards go out when Dave the power washer goes into his CRM and marks a job complete 50 postcards automatically go out to the neighbors so I look the pain of my home service business and how hard it was to send direct mail and then involving some pretty smart people along the way our friend Scott Eganhouse from Tech Mail has been a huge part of what we've been building um, that is awesome yeah Scott is an amazing amazing human um putting all these things together where when I started out this thing was only going to be front facing. We have now built the back end. I apparently own a print shop now. If you would have told me three years ago that I was going to be in this business, I would have told you guys you were crazy. And now I'm sitting in a, it's not a huge facility. We have 7,000 square feet here in the Twin Cities. We run a, you know, a light production, digital presses, the postcards, we do yard signs, but all of our print, I have no interest in print. I have no interest in the margin off of postcards. Our business is very much based off of subscriptions. So we get these home service businesses on a subscription and we focus on direct mail automation. I want postcards to go out when you change a status in your CRM, when someone goes to your website and we can send postcards to the people that visit your website. Or we have like a, like a crazy feed on a, a new so home like buyer so campaign. So like, are you set up for a uh, person goes to the website? It's the first time you'll send something for the first time. You'll know if they were there second, third or fourth time and just pull off pieces. 
So wow. that technology is really interesting, Warren. It's been a, it's been around for a while. The the cookies, the IP addresses, and again, remember, before anything, I'm a data guy. Like we're a data. No, company. actually, I was going to say you're a cleaner. Hey, a d- d- very fair statement. I am a cleaner before I'm anything that stumbled onto a spreadsheet and got kind and of excited. Apparently, you'll clean anything, including data. Anything. You're right. You had us. You know what? I should put that on my business card. Yeah, make that Absolutely. work. Absolutely. Yeah. So the, our whole thing is looking at like. It's not about the margin off a postcard because we all know that the, the margin on print goes down and down as every minute passes in the day. Someone found another guy to do it for cheaper. You're fighting for the business. We don't go after that. We turn smaller jobs into, we spin them into gold. I sell postcards to these home service people anywhere from 69 cents to $1.29 a piece in a job that your print shop, anyone watching this, probably couldn't handle but we stack these up and, all during the day. Print shop would probably sell it for seven cents at a loss with no data. Bingo, where we're making 400 to 700 times more and I'm getting them on a subscription. By, by the way, you should be on Shark Tank with numbers like that because Kevin O'Leary would not have anything to say to you other than I want to be with you. We, we are very fortunate and humbled to be in a position right now where I have this stick in my office and I grab it to beat people away that are trying to give me money because I don't trust them. Awesome, awesome. So just quickly, the a couple of little things. The, the, the name, Dope Marketing, spectacular. Thank you. Spectacular for uh, a couple of reasons that come to mind really quickly. When I think about the printing industry and I think about all the old people and the old f- I'll say because they're stuck in their ways. They think right away that dope is grass, marijuana, anything you're smoking, right? But when you go to Urban Dictionary, and I went to Urban Dictionary, but it's so the definition on Urban Dictionary is say something is cool. Most heard in big cities. Yeah, they mentioned the drug, but that's the fourth thing, right? So who are you appealing to? You're appealing to the younger people, not the old f- in the industry. Bingo. Dope is cool. And, and it, so here's, here's a thing. There's, there's a couple stories behind the name. So first off, it is a slang term that's lasted five generations. I mean, like, like you go back 50, 60, 70, look it up. They were saying this word in pop culture. It's evolved. Yes, someone could, could associate it with smoke and dope, but that's not what it is. So we went through a branding intensive for my data company. My data company is the most boring. It's called A-Type Data. It's the most boring name in the world. It's supposed to be. It's data. So at least, with, at least with A-Type, you come to the top of the list. There you go. Now we got some thinkers in the room. So we go A-Type Data. We paid an obnoxious amount of money to do a rebrand. And we start looking at it. And I'm up one night uh, <clears throat> uh, filling out this, this big booklet or whatever. What do you want to do for your clients? And what the thing? And I'm like, I want to run the dopest business ever and have our clients think we're dope. And, you know, I'm just being a smart ass on the thing. And the the guy doing our branding intensive, who is now our creative director, Joe Cody, Joe calls me the next morning, goes, Dave, that's it. It's dope marketing. And I'm like, oh man, that sounds corny. I might be an ex-drug dealer. I don't know. I don't want to know if I want to get into it. So Joe's like, no, it's going to stick. So I'm on my stepmother up here in the Twin Cities, land of 10,000 lakes. She had one of those, uh, the, the pontoon, uh, like a time share thing. You can go to the different lakes or whatever and get on a boat. So we go on the boat with the kids. This is about three years ago. We came up with a name. She said, David, I heard you open a new company. Diana, very serious woman, one of like Napa's biggest distributors for abrasive grinding material. Just a smart woman. She's like, so David, what's the name of the company? I'm like, uh, dope marketing. She goes, oh, you mean like if I use your services, my clients will get addicted to my product like they're on dope. I say, Diana, you understand it. The world understands it. Get the, the one and a half people that are offended by it or don't like whatever. I don't want to talk screw to them. Like, so beat it. But dope, it gets by better. The, way, the people that are offended should be smoking some dope. Yeah, calm down. So so the 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 story start, starts there, but it gets better. So I'm, I'm at a convention last year, end of the year, roofing show in New Orleans. And I'm standing out front. I got my red dope marketing hoodie on. And this guy who just spoke on stage, he was like a, a four tour decorated sniper, Afghanistan, just Mr. America comes out. He goes, Dave, dope marketing. I like that. I said, thanks, Eric. You know, he's, what does it mean? I tell him a quick story. He said, you know what dope means to a military, to a sniper, right? I said, Eric, I have no clue. Data on previous engagement. 
I, I fell over on the sidewalk. I was like, oh, so by the way, that definition should be written somewhere on your website. We're, 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 we're working on putting okay. all of the beauty together. Wow. So the, the, the data on previous engagement, think about this, printers, marketers, anyone watching this, how do you make a decision on a campaign without having data? How do you take Dave, the window cleaner, when he approaches your business and he says, I looked you up, I found you on Google, I want some strategy. You take his data. You say, give me your last year of jobs by zip code. Sort it by zip code. And those top five zip codes, that's where we're going to go pull a list of homeowners with a home valued over 400,000 that have lived there for three years because that's your avatar. That's your perfect customer. You're taking the dope. You're taking the data on previous engagement from anyone. It, it works literally in anything. So where does the name come from? A couple different stories. I like the latter one the best. Oh, for sure. For sure. So no, I think it's, uh, and listen, I mean, even, even, even now you're in our industry, even though you don't really know for the industry, but I think you make a great example for the industry because we got to change it up. Right. And all I hear from, all I hear from uh, some of these old folks and I don't say that in a mean way, because just if you're older than me, you're old. And, uh, you know, they, they're talking about the way, you know, the way it was doesn't matter anymore. It's the way it Lighting is. your cigars with $100 bills off printing your magazines and stuff. Yeah, those days are gone, sadly. Yeah, I was going to make a joke, but it would have to have been edited out, but I'll tell you offline after. Uh, <laughs> no, but I, I, I'm, I'm, first of all, I love the energy. Because there's not a lot of people. I, I kind of feel like I'm talking a little bit to myself. You know, you, you're excited. You don't get. You don't finish a sentence. You're on to the next sentence. You got an idea. You know. So, what would your message be out there to other printers? Being that you're not a printer, you just happen to own equipment, do some data, and make some money. What's your message to? You've dealt with printers when you didn't have your own before. So, what's your message to printers today? Here's the deal, printers. It is your job to keep up on best practices. You have one job. The world isn't the same and success leaves clues. So it's like, you need to look at how industries are changing, how technology is changing, how communication is changing. If I asked any of you printers 15 years ago, what was cross-channel marketing, you could have given me an answer, but that answer is not the same as it was a year ago. Or uh, actually, I will tell you, they probably couldn't give you an answer then. And most probably can't give you a good answer today. That's I would challenge anyone to be able to give that answer because now you are not the flagship as a printer of this marketing campaign. You are a notch in that tool belt. Hang on, should we put a challenge? Should we put a challenge out there and I'll do a side video with you? Yes. Promoting. So what do you want to challenge other people to? I would like to challenge the definition of cross-channel marketing to a printer and where you think you play a role as a printer in a cross-channel marketing strategy going into 2022. Okay, we're not gonna do it on here, but I'm gonna set something else up with you. We're just gonna be promoting little tidbits and see who answers. Yes, I like that. Right, and then we'll put it's together a, a little bit. Then we'll put together a little conversation of people. We'll get a big Zoom going and see who wants to talk and hash it out because usually from all that stuff, other great ideas come. Bingo. So one of the biggest things in this print world that I never liked was uh, there's not enough people talking like this openly, freely around the table, right? Or it's one thing that I've seen that never made any sense to me. And this is just as an entrepreneur. So when I started my cleaning company, it was, you know, how do you do this? How do you get to a million bucks? How do you get off the truck? How do you just do bids? I don't want to do the labor. And it's like, steal like an artist, find the guy in your market that's doing what you want to do look at what he's doing get some inspiration from it put your spin on it go wake up earlier go to sleep later and outwork these people and so in the print space it always messes me up because people are my competition i don't want to share i i came up with this little envelope that's just so unique that no one else like get the fuck out of here dude you you need to play your position oh uh, I, I, so when you say that, I remember we used to come up against these companies that would be out there saying, we've developed our own coatings, uh, our own gloss, our own this. And I'm thinking like, dude, you do $4 million a year. Where did you think you came up with this solution? Do you think, you think Sun Chemical, Actega, or any of those actually coming up with a blend for you? It's removing the technician mentality, because that's what I've really seen. When, when I compare the print space to the home service, we're all just local businesses. It's all the same shit, Absolutely. but it's like... When you look at, you know, there's a reason you started your business. You went to school, you were a designer, you saw that you could buy a piece of equipment 
No, I was a disaster. Father, I, I was a disaster. There was no room for me. They asked me to leave. There you go. Or your your father, your grandfather owned a print shop. You came into it second, third right. generation. Maybe you worked at a print shop. You saw another way. You came into some dough. You married smartly, acquired some, whatever the case was. The whole thing is like this technician mentality is what is wrong, not with print space, with the yeah. local business space. Yeah. Because when you explain something of our paper, our coatings, our unique product, our service, our quality, and our price. <sighs> right. No one cares. How do you take, so at Dilt Marketing, we say, Warren, you have a hundred problems during the day. I just fix four of them perfectly. That's it. That's my job. And so direct mail is hard. Automating direct mail is harder. So Warren, are you currently sending postcards to the neighbors of a job that you complete without you having to lift a finger? Warren, are you currently sending postcards to your website visitors that don't fill out a form? Warren, if Dave moves in to your service area tomorrow, is he getting a postcard next week? If you answered no to any of those, hi, we're dope marketing. This is what we help with. And then if they want to buy f***ing yard signs and trifolds and brochures, sure, we have a print shop. We'll print any of this shit for you. Are we got print or Vista print or any of these low? T no, but we will communicate with you like a human. It won't be a robot. You can get your product. We can do all the design and put it together. We don't do digital. We don't do TikTok. I won't build your website. I won't build your Facebook ads. I see all these printers that can't figure out how to make money off print anymore. And they're like, we're building websites. We're running your Facebook ads. We're selling you a bag of dope. We're and by whatever the way, it is. Unless you're in it, you can't make money building websites because the time is more consuming than actually doing corrections on a printed piece. Every time. Right. People Every single are, time. And we know design is money. the bane of all of our existence. Right. But people don't want to pay us in our industry for actual tactical changes that we're making. And you can see uh, getting paid for changes in the design world is even harder because there's nothing tangible. We are right? getting paid. It's like, it's like people are looking for ways to be more miserable in what they do than make it simplified. Daily. And what they forget is that as printers, we have a job right now that you can't achieve through digital, through mark, through any of the online shit. We can create intimacy. I can put something in your hands that you touched. And maybe it looks like your truck wrap. It looks like your Facebook ads. It looks like your website. You strategize with these clients how they put together a cross-channel marketing campaign. You just solve the hardest part and give them the advice. You're smart enough to run your own Facebook or to hire an agency. You're smart enough to do this and this. We just check the boxes of what's most difficult because as a business owner, what's your most valuable currency? It's your minutes. I'm going to give you back your minutes so you don't have to find a list. You don't have to clean a list. You don't have to go through design. You don't have to go to the post office. You don't have to argue with Karen to get her to accept your mail, to do whatever. Which, which the by the way, uh, you know, just the list itself, the amount of time a person's going to spend. It's, uh, I, I, you know what? I started figuring out a long time ago that I put an hourly rate to my time. Amen. Whether, whether it's actually, whether I'm worth it or not is another conversation another. over drinks. But you know what? I, I remember one time I'm even, I'm traveling and I'm flying and I get to the airport and the lineup is to, to check into the economy was like, looked like two hours. So I flip out, I go to the front. I say to the, the flight, the girl at the flight desk, I said, how much is an upgrade to business? She says, it's $440. I went to eight hour flight, $440, $43 an hour. I still have $460 that I charge. It's only, I'm making money just sitting on the plate, not being tired and asleep, yep. right? Call me crazy, but you know, you always got to do that. It's, oh, you get Yes, yeah. yeah, and I find in, I find in the world of print, a lot of print owners just go in circles. They're not really ready to move forward, although they should move forward. I find they don't necessarily listen to the people within their business who know about certain things a little better, right? As owners, we can be stubborn. Yeah. Oh, believe me, for sure, for sure. Listen, part of what I want to do with the Print Whisper now is go in and help other printers because I know what it is to be there. The other thing I know is when you're burning in the fire, you don't smell your own skin burning. And then by the time you get out, you got three degree burns or third degree burns. So it's pretty, uh, it's pretty tough. I think what you're offering is a great, uh, is a great opportunity for your customers. It makes sense. I mean, it just goes back to what we were saying before. It's best practices. I mean, like the, the world is going to change regardless of our opinion of it or not. And what my vision of this was, I'm not the guy here saying, 
Uber, taxi cabs, Blockbuster, Netflix. We're changing the world. That's not what I'm up to. I'm also not out here to like buy a private jet or convince the world that I know how to run a business. I saw a problem for an industry that I'm very intimate with. There's about 77 verticals that we break down in home service from back lawn care, roofing, solar, window cleaning, pest control. The problem we solve is very relative. They need to automate direct mail and that is our focus. So speaking from experience of their pains, here's the beauty of what we've done, Warren. We're focused on home service because it's what we know, but real estate, you got a coming soon, just listed, under contract, open house, just sold. The math is the same. A real estate agent can use our tool just as if the uh, the chiropractor, the dentist, the golf course, the restaurant. We got to feed on the birthday lists, the new movers. It's getting an automation set up. It's all f-ing relative. Wow. Wow. You just gave me five more ideas put on my list. I already have too many ideas right now. No, you would be both. I need one of those. Like I need a hole in the head. Yeah, no, exactly. <clears throat> wow. 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 So, and do you have salespeople on the road? What do you, like, what do you do? Not on the road. So we do, uh, we have, we did the remote thing last year. I got like the high tier in sales, you know, 80 grand base with the commission, the whole print setup shit. That doesn't work for us. I like them here. I like to touch them. I like them young. I like them out of school. Okay. By the way, by the way, by the way, I get what you're saying, but for the audience, everything he's talking about is over 18 and everybody's consenting. Bingo. Okay. (laughs) here's here's what i like i and i wrote i wrote probably the best hiring ad that i've written in my i mean i've hired and fired hundreds of people whatever i wrote the best hiring ad that i've ever written over the past three months in a time like right now so what's today september 7 2021 i'm getting like 50 applicants a week on wow. indeed who can say that right now hiring for their print shop prints but you can't even find i just hired two people today to work because we're printing so many postcards right now What I like is I can take her, we've made a system now, within two weeks, I can bring in someone with no print experience. I need a personality. I need to hear your teeth on the phone. I need you here in the Twin Cities so I can train you in person and talk to you. We can now onboard this person. We have a really good base commission structure where I have, uh, I have internal salespeople. We also leverage technology. So each of our salespeople has like a VA in the Philippines that does their emails, their follow-ups, their text messages, their appointment oh. reminders. We're using the world and technology and communication as we can. So two of our people are off-site, but everyone else is here in the Twin Cities. We have 17 employees right now. The business turns two years old next month. And we will do this year in revenue, we'll just do short of $4 million. Very cool. And even, even to be on the rise during this whole craziness that we're living through. Right? The job is the same though, right? What do these guys need? They need automated postcards. And so one of the beautiful things that Scott always talks about with our business that he likes a lot and uh, our friend, Kevin O'Leary, will probably like too. So you got to sell your print shop. I'm a numbers guy. You got to sell your print shop. What are you doing? 1.5, 1.75, two off EBITDA, maybe, depending on how long you've been in business, how good your systems are, whatever. Well, that multiplier, we turn that over on its head. Because of our subscription model, we sell a subscription for $50, $250, and $1,000. You guys look up the website, all the shit's on there, whatever. I'm going after a 10 to 17 multiplier off of EBITDA with the subscription base just off of our print shop. But here's the beauty. I'm still making 400 to 700 times more off each print item that we send, but I'm locking this client down on a subscription and giving them value every single time. Free postcards, discounted print, discounted rates, automation setups, all that stuff. And so our business model is a little bit different than your traditional printer. That doesn't mean that a printer that sat down and had a meeting with their team in Q4, could not bless you, could not change over to this model very quickly because the world lives and operates off of subscriptions. And as long as it's not some hollow one that, hey, you're paying to use my software. Oh, I, no. You know what? I think I think when I look around at, at everything, the print industry is always the last to react, right? You think and, that, but it's not. Your industry is the last to react. No, no, well, I refer to the print world that I know because you're in print 3.0, right? You figured out that it's print and other stuff, Fair. right? Uh, print is not alone. Listen, I've been telling everybody for as long as I could remember selling, 
Uh, I remember in 19, 2005, we did a, a pitch to someone and our, the, the, the cover of the binder was two hands reaching out that said, we're, you know, we, we provide print solutions. No one used that back then, right? I was using that peacock in my advertising yep. in colors. And then all of a sudden, two years later, everybody's using a peacock. I figured out a long time ago that we are print communication specialists. Yep. It doesn't matter whether we're printing a postcard, putting it on a sign, putting it on a window decal, it's print. To me, print is print and I don't care what it's on. It's just print and it's all interrelated, right? Bingo. And that's the thing. It's like where people ask us, and we were confused about this for the first, even I'll say 18 months in our business. I mean, like the print automation thing, even as we have these conversations, What's our job worn in business? You got to be agile. You got to be willing to pivot. And so when we looked at the need of our customers, we were generating really cheap deals. Like I sell $100,000 a month right now in just yard signs. Now nah, 50 to 100 a month, let's say, on good months. We can take a yard sign lead on Facebook and I can generate a business to message my Facebook page for 3 to $5 to inquire about a yard sign. What do I do? I sell them signs as a loss leader. And then I get them on with my sales team to ask them if they're automating direct mail in their business or not. And so it's just looking at the workflows and the processes and even going back to where the light bulbs were going off when we started talking about the other verticals and shit. The problem that we solve as printers is still as relative it was back in 1980. It doesn't matter. It's how much better can you explain it to your client to solve a problem that they have right now? Why are your clients not sending mail? Why do you not have more business for mail? Because it's f-ing hard to set up a direct mail campaign. And well, you're also not you're also not talking it. You're not learning it. You're not bringing in the people that know it to teach you. Bingo. I, I'll tell you when I started in business, um, one of the key things for me always, always was try to put myself around people that are smarter than me. I mean, sell us, and this is like truthful. Selfishly. I didn't want to make the, the mistakes. I knew I was going to make some, but I wanted to prevent as many as possible from other people's information. Surround yourself with people that have already paid the dumb tax. Right. I, I mean, I pay a little tax every day, but I'm trying Amen. to minimize it. Amen. Right? <laughs> Keep it minimal. Okay, listen, we, we're, we, we're going, I think you have something coming up and we could go and go and go. But what we're going to do is we're going to have, uh, well, number one, I'm going to round back with you about the challenge. Because we're going to put something out there just to see who wants to speak up, who wants to talk, and who's afraid, who's not afraid to be heard, whether they're right or wrong. We just yeah. want interaction with people. Absolutely. Right. Uh, I also want to come back around with you, do another discussion on this and how it's going, because I really think you're onto something. And it's not even about competition or anything, because I think there's enough work out there that if everyone just puts their blinders on and concentrates on what they do and not worried about the Big competition. Up. Because who, so what, you're going to copy the competition and make the same mistakes and lose money because you're matching them? Makes no sense, right? No so uh, we'll do that. We'll come around to do, uh, discuss that. But wow, um, all I could say is somebody energized and exciting like myself. Uh, and we have the same hairstyle too. Wow. Well, yeah, I got the memo. Yeah. I got, yeah. When I started in print though in 92, I had an afro, but kind of changed. I I have had the same haircut since I was 15. It's easy. Then I realized I was balding and I was like, shit, let's keep this easy. Right. Exactly. It was easy. It was easy. All right. So Dave, uh, A, I need to thank you for your time. Okay. Uh, We'll roll back around Uh, to everybody else. uh, If you got this far and you watched the video, uh, pass it on to people. This is a good video. This isn't about competition. This is about really what you have opportunities to do. Uh, if you want to know more about this stuff, uh, reach out to me and I'll get to Dave just because Dave seems pretty busy. So uh, I'll be the wall, but it's a good wall. Uh, if anybody listening actually wants to do an interview with me, talk and uh, about their company, I'd love to talk to you. So please reach out to me. Uh, to everybody else, if you don't want to reach out, don't reach out. What can I tell you? Uh, Warren Worbit, what they think. I love print and I really love talking to other printers and learning. So uh, again, thanks, Dave. And thanks to everyone out there who's watching. Uh, Subscribe to my YouTube channel in case I uh, forgot to mention it before. Probably did. Trying to get a thousand viewers. I only have 446 now. Uh, Other than that, that's it. So thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Stay safe. Cheers.